All right, welcome everyone. Hey, 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 thank you for joining me here on the flip side. We're going to be doing a live review of Imperial... I always want to say Imperial Settlers. It is set in the Imperial Settlers universe, but this is called Imperial Miners. It's a mining game where you're trying to uh, basically build the best, most productive mine amongst you and your opponents. Uh, but you do so by placing cards down into your mind that represent different rooms in your mind. Uh, and um, then you're going to be activating those mines as you travel back up to the surface with your, uh, with your hard work wages. Carts full of rocks and rubies and precious materials. Uh, so, Nuno Rebello is here. Hello, Matthew Vincent. Hello, hello. Tom is here. Good to see you. Thank you for being here, guys and gals. Karen is here, too. Good afternoon, all. Enjoy a beautiful day. Yes, it is actually a very beautiful day. It's a little chilly up here in the Pacific Northwest, but it is a very nice day out there. And Adam Wilson, welcome. Thank you for being a member with our Chester Copperpot level thank you so much for being uh for for the support we certainly appreciate that adam thank you so much and thank you everybody else for being here uh your presence is support so we thank you too uh, matthew vincent i don't know if i like a game whose theme is hard work hi ho hi ho it's off to work we go right well this um it does uh abstract away all of the actual hard work. So uh, this isn't actually a game about hard work. This is a game about uh, producing a lot of points. And points are represented by pretty little gems. And uh, actually the gems that are used in this game are some of uh, my favorite kinds of components that are used in games just because a little bit of strangely shaped plastic can go a long way in bringing the theme closer to the surface. Hmm, no pun intended. Uh, but yes, uh, this is an actual, um, it's not a long game. It plays up to five players and uh, it goes for about 45 minutes to an hour. It says 30 minutes to an hour, but I think the only way you're going to get 30 minutes in is if you're doing a, um, a solo mode. It does have a solo mode, uh, and it has a pretty good one at that. Um, it pretty well mimics the uh, the experience that you get in a multiplayer game, uh, and I like it when solo modes do that. I don't want to play a different game in a solo mode. I want to play the same game, just I can't play it with other people. Um, so that, that's a cool thing as well. I like when solo modes mimic very closely the, the multiplayer experience when you play them. So, uh, that's what this one does. Uh, it does handle five players pretty well as well because everything is done simultaneously. And we'll get down to the table in just a few moments to, uh, kind of explain how, uh, the game works and the mechanisms that are involved and all of that kind of stuff. But uh, generally speaking, uh, you're going to be playing a card out of your hand. You're going to try to chain those things up. You can, you can generate gold. You can generate other special abilities. Not all of the cards produce actual money that you use in the game. Um, but you're also going to be using uh, that gold to move up some different progress tracks. And when you advance on one of those progress tracks, you'll get to get a, a lot of different kinds of... Uh, uh, special uh, rewards and prizes and extra cash and more cards that you can put down into your uh, mind. Um, so uh, basically the, the, the person that wins will be the person who is best able to uh, place their rooms uh, of the mine in such a way that, that they can maximize the chain effects of those and then maximize the progress tracks as well. Um, uh, but yeah, that goes, that's how that goes. It plays over a course of 10 rounds. So there is a, a finite, uh, number of rounds. Uh, it doesn't, it just doesn't keep going. Uh, it's, it's 10 rounds and, uh, there are more than, I believe there's like 
uh, 14 or 16 event cards uh, because you do have an event phase where you'll turn over a card and um, it will affect everybody in, in a number of different ways. And uh, then you'll play a card out of your hand, but everything's pretty much done simultaneously, which is why a five-player game can be done in just about an hour. Now, if it's your first game, probably not going to take an hour, probably closer to an hour and a half. Um, <clears throat> uh, it is, um, It does have some trappings, I guess you could say, and we'll talk about those in my final thoughts section. But uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Matthew Vincent says, that is more like it. Abstract the hard work and go straight to the paycheck. That's what we're talking about, buddy. Uh, not real, but yes, that's what this game is like. Uh, are the nice components uh, come with the regular game or are they an upgrade? No, uh, the nice components are not an upgrade. Uh, they do come with the base game. I bought uh, this game from... Hmm, I did buy this from uh, JT. JT had a little... Um, flummox happened with his order they actually ended up sending him two copies so um i paid him for the second copy and uh, he passed that along but um uh, because it, it they thought that his initial copy got lost in the mail um and so they sent him another one and then uh, shortly after that got all worked out his original copy showed up so um i bought this off of him and uh uh, he has uh, the the copy that they sent. Uh, so it was just kind of a, a whole snafu type thing, but uh, it was all on the up and up. Don't, uh, don't think otherwise. Uh, anyway, uh, so I don't know exactly. I did not buy this in a store. I bought it from JT, and JT got his. I believe he pre-ordered it online. I don't believe it was a Kickstarter, but I could be wrong. Um, I'm not absolutely sure, but I did pay for this. This was not a review copy that was sent. Uh, and everything that you show is uh, everything that I'm going to show you came in this box. I did not have to buy any upgrade packs or anything like that. But uh, uh, so to answer your question a little bit more succinctly, I don't believe so. <laughs> I believe everything that I'm about to show you is what comes in the box uh, if you buy it uh, right now. Uh, let's see here. Kabuki Kid is here. Hello, hello. Uh, you were competing with yourself. I was just watching your Koi game review. Yeah, I know. Um, my reviews go up at 1 o'clock. Uh, but that's a short review, so you can go ahead and do that and come back and catch up. That's fine. Thank you. Um, short review, yeah. Uh, Kohaku. Uh, my review for Kohaku went up on the Dice Tower today uh, about 10 minutes ago. And uh, it's just the way it is. I have, I have a uh, chiropractor's appointment this afternoon that I have to get to. Uh, I also have to go pick up the kids, um, and I also have to uh, get my part of dinner going as well. So I had to schedule this one a little bit earlier than I really wanted to today, but it's just the way it is. I have to clean up in here. We have company coming over tonight, uh, so I've got to clean up in here because this is the room that uh, the kids use uh, while the adults are uh, uh, yammering away in the uh, living room. So it, it's just what it is. Uh, so it, it, it's all well and good. Uh, but thank you for watching my review over there. I appreciate that. Uh, Kohaku is a great game. Uh, really enjoy that game a lot. And I'm very, very happy that uh, 25th Century sent me a review copy for it and that I could do it on the Dice Tower. Uh, Tom has already done it uh, three years ago, um, a review of it, that is. But uh, I just got introduced to it today, uh, you know, recently. And, um, and I really enjoy the game. So I, I, I wanted to uh, do kind of like a... Uh, how has it held up type type of review for it for the uh, dice tower so from a different point of view i guess but there you have it all right well with a sip of coffee we shall head down to the table and take a look at imperial miners and uh see what we can see here all right so here is uh, a two-player game set up of Imperial Miners. Now, in the game, uh, in the setup part of the rulebook, uh, there is a manner of drafting. You can basically just choose which cards you pick uh, from these decks. Um, that's probably a little bit more for more experienced uh, gamers with this specific game, not just experienced gamers in... in uh, in general, uh, but there is a there is a caveat that instead of uh, going through and drafting and, and choosing what cards you want to start with, uh, you just take two ones, two twos, and two threes, 
and and these are all different level cards. You're going to be working down. Level one is up at the top. Level two, level three, and then finally level four at the bottom. Um, but um, uh, so that's what I've done here. I've just set apart two of each, and those are the six cards that you start with. You would basically you would basically pick eight, and then you could get rid of two. So you you start with six, no no matter. Um, but um, this is just a little bit quicker on the uh, setup. These are point gems that you're going to have. These are machine parts that some of the, the different cards are gonna ask you to put into your rooms. These are collapse tokens that uh, also are going to be placed on rooms from certain, uh, from certain effects and certain uh, times uh, throughout the game. For example, uh, right here on the military track, that is one of the uh, things that you have to put a collapse token on one of your rooms. Uh, but you get other things for that. Uh, this is the uh, gold and silver that you use as a currency in the game. And then these little guys right here are pretty cool. They're little wooden uh, carts, uh, gold carts, mining carts, that uh, you'll be putting down into your, um, your uh, mining shafts as you go throughout the game. And those are actually going to uh, count for points at the end of the game because they... Uh, represent a full mining card. And of course, you want as many full mining cards as you possibly can. This is an event deck right here. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, there are, uh, you only use 10 event cards per game, and there are more than that in the box. So there's a little bit of uh, variability there. Um, so uh, what you're basically going to be doing is um, the round structure. I already said you're going to play 10 rounds, but the round structure is such that you'll, first of all, in the event phase, turn over an event card. And depending on what color the event card is, this one's green. This is going to actually happening, happen in the mining phase of the game where people are going to be putting uh, cards into their mine and then activating those cards effects. Uh, so the green ones happen during the mining phase. Then you will also have red ones that will happen at the end of the round. So these are ones that you can kind of prepare for during the round, and then they take effect at the end of the round. And then you also have blue ones that are immediate effects that as soon as you flip them over, everybody gets to do that if they have accomplished uh, whatever the goal that is stated. Sometimes it's there's not even a goal. Like this one here just says gain three points or you can draw a, uh, a level four card. All of the level four cards basically do the same thing. Whenever you uh, activate a level four card, they gain you two points. So gaining three or gaining a room that you might be able to activate more than once that's the choice that you would have to make on that particular event. But the event phase happens and you simply turn them over. Blues happen immediately. Reds happen at the end of the round. Greens happen during the mining phase. So after you have chosen a, um, uh, an event card and you've resolved it, or if you, if you can, or you simply turn it over and, and let everybody know what's going to happen, then everybody at the same time will be able to take uh, their cards and start placing rooms down into their uh, mine. Now, when you place a room in a mine, you're, you're really trying to make sure that you can either uh, get a full mining card. And if you can't get a bunch of mining cards that are full, you want to do it at least to where they are half full like this right here, because other effects that will have you gain uh, a mining cart will give you the ability to place mining carts on these half filled spaces like that. And that constitutes a full uh, cart. But if you have one over here like this, where it's completely empty, you can't place a mining cart on those. They have to be half full. So I would you know, recommend with the first card, trying to get as many uh, matches as possible. But if you can't get a bunch of matches, at least get a couple of halves so that you can uh, uh, be able to possibly put a mining cart on there at a future turn. But uh, some cards will have costs on them and you have to pay those in gold. Uh, but all of your level ones are free. Level fours are also free. It just depends on how good the 
uh, the special ability that the card is and, and how much it'll cost. But I've placed a level one down here. This is a harp thief. And it says basically gain one gold or I can spend three gold to discard a collapse from any card in your mind. And I can spend one less gold for that ability for every Scottish card that I have in my mind. Uh, there are a uh, num there are six factions that are in the game and they all have different abilities but the factions are represented on this little stone tablet on the left side of the cards and so you would just have to go through and uh, check to see how many other Scottish cards I have I don't have any Scottish cards in my in my uh, mind right now so I'm just going to basically gain one gold uh, so that can go right there so I've activated this card. Now what I'm going to be able to do is activate things that are above it. So right now the surface is above it and I have three options that I can choose from when I'm activating the surface. I can either gain two more gold or I can spend four gold to advance two spaces on whatever uh, progress track I want to advance on or I can spend eight gold to progress up to five spaces. And the reason I say up to is because it's just that. You don't ever have to go exactly two or five spaces. You have the ability to go up to that far by paying four or eight gold if you choose this one. Or you can draw three, three cards and then you have to check to make sure you're not over your hand limit of eight. Uh, and if you are, you have to discard down to eight cards. But if you choose this one, you can choose cards from any of these three decks uh, you can't choose to draw a four because there are very restricted uh, ways to get four level fours, but um, you can draw cards from any of these in any combination. So if you wanted to draw three ones, you could. Draw three threes, you could. Draw one of each, that's fine too. Any combination, but you draw three and then make sure you discard down to eight if you're over. So I've already uh, activated this card. I would get to do one of these. I'm just going to go ahead and get two more gold because... Uh, I'm not going to be able to really do anything else right now anyway. So then everybody else would do that. Everybody else would do this at the same time. It's simultaneous. And then you go to the next round. Uh, so let's say we did that. Let's flip over another card. So at the end of my turn now, I can discard two, three, four, or five cards from my hand to gain one, three, six, or ten gold. Huh. Well, okay then. Uh, so now what I think I'm going to do is um, I think I'm going to go ahead and pay two bucks because I want to put another card down here. This is a level two card, as you can see, and they go underneath level one cards. Now, the reason this is important, when you are doing this, you have to set it off to the side. You can't just do this right here. So you set it off to the side. I have another half cart right here. That's why I chose to do this side and not this side because then I don't have a cart that uh, I can't fill later on. So I'm going to do that. And now I'm going to uh, activate the card that I just put down. So I can spend three gold. I can gain three gold or I can spend eight to activate any other card in my mind. I don't have eight bucks to do that. But it's also playing off of these Scottish uh faction as well. So this is a cool combination. Maybe I want to try looking for more Scottish cards so I can start using these um, activations at a little bit of a better uh, clip. So I'm going to just go ahead and gain three bucks here. So I've activated this. Now I have to go up in a chain. So if I had another card over here, for example, if I had done this, I would have to choose. Do I activate this card or do I activate this card? I can't do both of them. So um, I think what I will do is uh, I'll go ahead and just activate this one. Now, the reason I did that is, I don't know, it, they both give me one. I can't really use this very much uh, because if this card has at least two completed uh, mining cards, I gain two instead of just one. Well, I have one up here, so maybe... As soon as I can place one of those mining carts, I might want to fill one of these up so that I could activate this better ability for this patrol. But for right now, I can only activate for one. 
So I've activated this card. I chose to activate this card. I can't activate this one because of that. And now I get to activate one of these three up here. So now that I have five gold, I'm gonna go ahead and spend four uh, to move up on a progress track of my choice. At the beginning of the game, you start off the track, but as soon as you advance, you need to choose one and then move up to the number of spaces that you wanted to. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the artisan here, and that's where I'm gonna start. I paid four, so I can advance two. One, two. This says I gain one point, so I go ahead and, and grab a blue gem, and that's what I do. Any ones that you pass normally don't get activated, but there are some effects in the game that tell you to advance a certain number of spaces on the track and activate each place as you go up. Normally, though, it's just the one where you stop. Uh, as of note, blue gems are one point, green gems are five, and pink gems are uh, ten. Uh, so, now that I've done that, we go back and now we're at the end of the round. We're going to, I can discard two, three, four, or five. Um, I think I'm just going to uh, discard both of my threes. This might not be a great idea, but I'll discard both of my threes. They would simply just get put in a discard pile. And because I uh, discarded two, I get one buck. Oh, well two cards for one buck. Yeah, that's probably not a good idea. So I'm not going to do that. Everybody else gets to choose whether or not they're going to turn that up. And then we go into another round. And this is how we continue playing uh, cards and going up the tracks, triggering off our activation cards and all that kind of stuff until we've gone through 10 rounds. And then whoever has the most points at the end of 10 rounds is the winner. Now, you will uh, have gems as points, but as I said earlier, you'll also be able to uh, uh, count one point for every finished mine cart that you have on your sheet as well. So for example, and, and again, this is just to give you an example. If I had these here uh, and this was my end score, it wouldn't be. I'd have many more cards down here. I would have one, two, three, four, five, six points. So that's just to show you what you're looking at. So you take your gems that you've accumulated over the rounds and you add in your completed carts and then whoever has the most points is the winner. And that's it. All right, let's see here. Love the gems. Yes, yes, yes. Um, hi, Jesse. Are the kids asleep? Yes. Yes, they are. Different class today. The 10 four-year-olds are all asleep. Love Tim Armstrong's games, Ecto Fox says. Well, yes. This one is definitely one of my favorites. Um, I really enjoy this. Uh, one, of, one of Jesse's favorites, too. There you go. Um, love the gems. Yes, the gems do look nice. Uh, that's a good nap for four-year-olds. Great job. The gems are multifaceted and are nice. Yeah, that's one of the things that I really do enjoy uh, about this game are the different gems. Now, I will say this. In certain light, when you put these together, uh, let me go ahead and put it down, back down to the uh, ground here. The, when you put these two together, these two colors and how shiny it is, these are really hard to tell apart, especially if you get into some low light. Uh, these both look very similar. So that's my only real gripe about uh, these components. But I will say that Century Golem Edition uh, uses these as well for their gems in uh, that game, and I love these little gems. I don't know why, but uh, these little plasticky, uh, uh, gems are super, super cool, and they just lift the component value of the game uh, fairly well. Uh, but I just wanted to give that as a, a caveat. We've played this at uh, Steamers West a couple of times, um, and the lighting in Steamers West is decent. It's not 
horrible, but it's not very good either. Um, but these two colors are very hard to tell apart in many different uh, situations. So I just wanted to uh, uh, say that. Uh, when I had nursery school, I always had nap time and never once napped. I always just lied there waiting for it to be over. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, never was a napper. <laughs> I still never nap. It's weird, though. I fully admit that. Uh, wait until you're over 50. You'll look forward to nap time and do many naps. I'm napping now. Thanks a lot, Eric. Bushman and Karen understand me. Yep, yep, yep. On the flip side, I usually sleep about six hours a night. I did not get a lot of sleep last night. Um, I was up late, um, and, it, and, it, and it is what it is. It's not a complaint, but I was up late uh, doing um, videos because uh, you know I had to had to go watch my son uh, practice football, and um, then I went over to JT's house after that after dinner basically, and uh, we we played our first game of the sixth realm together, and that whew, is a heavy game, and so it took our, our a two player game learning game. It took us about three and a half hours, which was tough. But before, without further ado, let's go ahead and get to my final thoughts for uh, Imperial Miners. Okay, so first of all, I really, really enjoyed this game. I really enjoyed the chaining aspect. I really enjoyed uh, the different abilities that go on here. I loved the uh, tracks. I do want to mention, I didn't mention before, but each of these tracks are double-sided. So there are six different uh, progress tracks that you can use and that you can choose from. So you have uh, alchemy, you have economy, you have technology, uh, on the other side is military, and then you have diplomacy and artistry uh, uh, on each of those. So of course you can't use military and technology on the same one, you have to choose one or the other. You can't use diplomacy and artistry, you have to choose one or the other. You get what I mean there. but. Uh, these were uh, cool things as well uh, to kind of uh, mimic, I guess you could say, kind of like a, a tech tree. Uh, so I, I, I really thought those were cool things. Um, so my first pro of the game is how much game they shoved into this little box. I mean, goodness gracious. There is so much thought, so much decision making, uh, so many combos in this game. It's astounding how much they fit in there. And that's my first pro. This is a very small game that packs a huge punch. Now, it's not really small. It's not like you can carry it around in your back pocket, right? But it's not overly large either. This is a pretty small game, uh, especially by today's standards, and um, it has a huge punch as far as mechanisms are concerned, combinations, um, uh, you know, strategies, uh, tactics, all of that kind of stuff. Now, uh, I will say here that there isn't any, uh, there isn't any. Um, interaction between you and the other players. You're basically just doing a solitaire uh, multiplayer game. And that's one of the reasons why the solo mode is so closely uh, linked to the multiplayer experience, because that's pretty much what the multiplayer experience is as well. Uh, now, you do have the people sitting around you, and there's times that you can react to what they're doing. And hi, Strider, you need to lay down. Yes, you need to lay down. I'm busy. I can't do anything with you right now, except get that goop out of your eye. There you go. All right, lay down. Go on, lay down. Lay down. That's my boy. Down. Good boy. All right, sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> he does get a little clingy sometimes, which I'm totally fine with, but just not while I'm doing a video, please. <laughs> um, uh, so... Um, mechanisms are great, and they're so well packaged. Each of these different decks has a great number of cards in them, so there's going to be a lot of replayability. I like how each of the 
Uh, well, I guess this is going to be my second pro. I love the factions. The factions, how you can kind of choose which faction you really like playing with the most, but um, part of that is kind of a luck of the draw. So you have to really kind of choose, uh, maybe with your opening hand, hopefully you'll be able to uh, see a little bit of strategy there and be able to go after that strategy. But I like the fact that these different factions have different strategies linked to them. So you can kind of notice that early on and go with them. Uh, so that's my second pro. It, Basically, it gives you the opportunity to make your mind different than everybody else's. You know, I'm taking the Roman strategies, so I'm the Romans digging in my minds, and you're going to take the Scottish, and, and then, uh, well, no, you're the barbarians, and you can do a whole bunch of really cool stuff with collapsing your, your, your uh, places and all that kind of stuff. There's so many different things that you can do with those different factions, and some of them do kind of synergize well with the other ones as well. Uh, I think you saw on the um, on on the cards here that some cards have multiple factions listed on them. So mo cards will work with multiple factions, I, and and I like that. So my first pro was the fact that 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 it's it's a smaller game that packs a really big mechanical punch. Uh, my second pro was the fact that I love the factions and how they work together and they provide you with the different strategical bases that you can work from. Um, my uh, third pro, and I've already kind of mentioned it, is that is the component quality of the, uh, of the cards. Um, th now, they're not you know, uh, I, I, I maybe would have liked linen finish over them a little bit, but um, I'm not a stickler for that kind of thing. These are nice non-flimsy cards that uh, uh, will will work very well, and I think they'll ha they'll handle uh, uh, quite a, a good amount of use. Um, and there's a lot of them. The uh, player boards are uh, not flashy, but they are absolutely functional, um, and I like them as well. Uh, and the the coins um, are. Again, they're just cardboard tokens, but uh, they were nice. All of the different, the machine tokens and the uh, the uh, uh, collapse tokens are all just, you know, regular cardboard tokens. But I think the, uh, the ones that really kind of steal the show are the gems and these mining carts. They're just a little flare that added just enough thematic oomph to the game to make it that much better, if I can if I can say it that way. I've always said it uh, this way. Games that look good are just more fun to play. And when you have little tiny tweaks to the components, like those mining carts and these gems, that can make the difference between, eh, it's an all right game, to, man, that was really fun. I think I want to play it again. Because it's just more fun if the game looks better. So component quality is my... Um, is my gosh i've lost count fourth uh let's see there was uh packing a good punch mechanically speaking there was uh the factions and so i guess it's my third pro the component quality uh the fourth pro of the game is the fact that it does use simultaneous play i don't have to wait for this person to chain off all of their cards before i can start chaining off all of my cards now, if you're teaching the game, you might want to do a couple of rounds of that just so that you can make sure that people are understanding the different things that they have to do when they're chaining them off. But once everybody has their, their legs underneath them, then you can do everything simultaneous, as a matter of fact, and that makes the game clip along really, really fast. So you take what might be considered a, a somewhat heavy mechanically speaking game, not really, um, uh, the the heaviness comes in with with having to read all of the text and understand how that text can work well with something else. That's where the crunchiness happens. There's not a whole lot of it, but it is there. Um, so it takes that and and kind of reduces it down to a a 60 minute game, a 45 to 60 minute game. That's a really short time for a game like this, in my opinion. And I think that's really great because it doesn't overstay its welcome. So that's my fourth pro. Um, now, with that being said, uh, I, I, I do have a con, uh, just one con. And that con is simply 
that uh, it is deceptively um, crunchy. Um, well, no, it's deceptively simple. It, because the mechanisms are so easy, I'm just choosing one card, I'm just triggering off one, one uh, line of rooms, um, and then I'm done and I'm doing all of that simultaneously. Uh, only one event card is happening every round. Because everything seems so simple, you're like, well, yeah, anybody can play this game. And I found out the hard way that that's probably not true. Just because that we, just because we gamers think that something is easy, it doesn't mean that everybody thinks it's easy. And I found that out um, in, in very real fashion uh, at our last board game event, where I I tried to teach this um, in a adjacent to gateway type experience. I had people that I think have played many games before, but this was the first time we had played games together. Uh, so it was kind of a gateway-ish or adjacent to a gateway type experience. And this was a royal flop. This was a royal flop. Now, it wasn't the game's fault. Um, it's partially my fault for choosing it. Um, and it's partially my fault for having to <laughs> leave the game and go pick up my son from, from football practice and then come back. Uh, that made it be a little bit disjointed as well. But this was a royal fail for a gateway kind of experience. And uh, I'm using that as a con because um, I think sometimes gamers will look at this game and say, wow, what a simple game. And we'll forget, nah, it's not really that simple. Because I have to know how this card reads, and I have to know, have to understand how that card reads, and how well that card's going to work with this card over here, and then I have to understand what this card will do when it fires off. It allows me to move up this, and then I have to understand what that says right there, and I have to understand what that means as well. There's a lot of stop gaps in this game that really can become burdensome uh, for people who are new to the hobby, or Maybe they're not new to the hobby, but they're just not like, you know, up to our elbows like everybody, like, <laughs> like the gamers are, you know? Um, so it's deceptively simple. That's the con. And while that's not really a con for a seasoned gamer, because you could use this in almost any situation with seasoned gamers, if you have any kind of uh, reservation about using this game, I would follow that reservation. My goodness, Mr. Money Pants. <laughs> I, would, I would stick to your intuition because I didn't and it smacked me in the face. But that is not to say that this is a bad game at all. I love this game. So my rating for the game is going to be two thumbs up. I think if you like chaining events, not events, but if you like chaining abilities, uh, if you like tile placement or card placement, because that's basically what you're doing here, is you're placing those cards down into your, your uh, uh, tableau. If you like uh, triggering abilities and kind of a tech tree feel, but a, a real simple tech tree feel, I think the, uh, the progress tracks are going to definitely scratch that itch for you. I really enjoy this game. It's just not a gateway game, in my opinion. Uh, so that is Imperial Miners. Two thumbs, way up. I would definitely recommend it. I think it's one that um, gamers uh, could definitely have in their uh, collection as uh, almost a filler game. Uh, it's slightly longer than what I would normally consider a filler game. I usually try to cap it out a filler games at about 30 minutes but with 45 minutes and people who are savvy with how the game plays i think you could definitely whittle that down to about 30 minutes um so i think with a shoehorn you can fit this into a filler game category and i think it's great in that way component quality um uh, packs a huge mechanical punch in such a small box and it's very aesthetically pleasing and uh, the factions just really help you build all of those strategies with the game. The only con, and it's a kind of a very, um, it's a very specific con, I know that, uh, but it, it can be so deceptively easy. Don't 
underestimate and don't overestimate when you're trying to uh, in, um, introduce this to somebody new. You might, you might be giving them too much than they can chew. Uh, let's see here. Are you going to do a full solo stream for us someday? A full solo stream for us. What do you mean, solo stream? What are you talking about now, Eric? Um, you sleep when you're dead. <laughs> That's a Machi Koro size box. Only twenty-seven fifty on Amazon? Yes. That's cool. Are you going to do a full solo stream for us someday? I don't understand what that means. A full solo stream. What do you mean, Eric? Explain. Uh, component quality uh, matters. Same with art. Do the trays come with the game? No, they do not. The trays do not come with the game. I apologize for not stating that earlier. Um, these are my trays. I got them uh, from JT, and I believe JT got them on Etsy. Um, uh, but... Uh, the components inside the trays are what come in the box, not the actual trays. I'm sorry, I apologize. Don't expect those in the box. Thank you, Kabuki. Uh, I even like the backs of those number cards. Yes, yes. Um, it's really cool, these banners. I really like it. And the artwork on them is really cool as well. Um, I, <laughs> I love this one. I gotta show this one to you. Um, oh, why am I on two? Bubba, you need to go lay down. I love this one. Uh, I forgot I was up here. It says bug catcher. You got to, you know, you got to catch them all, but it's the it's the kid from Pokémon. I love that. That's so funny. Makes me crack up. Um, all right. Now, let's go ahead and put it back here. Now, I'll turn that off. Um yeah, those, uh, uh, I think they were Zen Bins. I think that's what they were called. Zen Bins, Kabuki Kid, um, where you can, you, they, they have, they actually open up into two trays. That's good. Uh, they are storage and also table trays for play. Yep, that's correct. Got some in the wingspan copy. Yep, yep, yep. Really handy. Um, similar containers for sushi takeout. Got a bunch of them in my games. Nuno, do you use them for Sushi Go? All right, we are no longer talking stream it solo or with just either one a full game. Are you talking about Imperial Miners? We have already done that. If you're talking about Imperial Miners, we have already done this. Um, we've done a multiplayer game and I've done a solo game of it. So you can go check those out. Um, yes, that has actually happened. Strider is now laying on my foot with his arm, with his leg wrapped around my ankle. Um, I don't know why, but that is what he's doing. Never once played a Pokemon game. I think I may have played the Pokemon card game a couple of times, but I realized really early on it was not for me. So, um, yeah, that's that. Yeah, you're welcome, Bushman. No worries. Um, well... Um, do we have any questions? Do we have any things that uh, you guys want to ask about? Um, uh, if you want, I can go over and talk about some of the different um, cards. I already mentioned these three, but some of the other things, for example, uh, tinkering is a red end of the round. Activate a card in your mind and then place a collapse token on it. So that gives you another activation of one of the um, uh, rooms in your mind. But what does a collapse token do? Well, a collapse token, um, when you would activate that card again and it has a collapse token, instead of activating the card, you simply remove the collapse token, but then you continue up your chain above that one. Uh, so basically a collapse token will um, make you not activate that particular room once at least, uh, but then after that token is removed, you can activate it again on a subsequent turn. Uh, head start. Uh, so this is an immediate one. It says draw a level one card um, and add it to your mind without activating it. So that's a pretty cool thing. Uh, morning bonus. Says that you can gain four gold or one point. And, and the players choose which one they're going to do. Uh, carrot harvest. 
uh, is a, um, a mining phase uh, event, and it says each time you complete a mining cart, you get to gain a point. So that's pretty cool because every mining part that you com every mining cart that you complete is going to be a point for you at the end of the game. But with this event, it's a point when you actually create it if you create it during that round. Uh, switcheroo is an immediate. Uh, choose a card in your mine and swap it with the top card of its corresponding deck without activating it or any other cards. So that's pretty cool. You can swap a card in with another. Uh, recourse, just simply draw three cards. That's pretty cool. Uh, place up to two machine parts or two mining carts in your mine if possible. And the reason it says if possible is because sometimes uh, not all cards can receive machine parts and uh, you would have to have uh, uh, two half carts in your mine in order to place two mining carts in there. So that's why it says if possible. Uh, but that just gives you an idea of the kinds of uh, events that are in the deck. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I don't want to go through a lot of stuff. But anyway, uh, talking about the collapse tokens, Unrequited Love is a level 3 room. And it's a barbarian faction room. It costs you 4 coins to put into your mind. And it says, place a collapse token on this card to gain three points. Uh, so that's the kind of stuff that you can do with different ones. Here's another one. This is also a level three barbarian card. And it says, activate all cards in your mind with collapse tokens, but ignore the collapse token when resolving the effect. So normally you can't activate a card uh, that has a collapse token on it, but this one, when you activate this card, you can activate all the cards that have uh, collapse tokens on them. Just imagine if uh, one of them was this one. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Normally, you can only have one collapse token on a card as well. So that's something to remember. But uh, let's see. Do we have any more questions here? I once sorted. <laughs> I once sorted Pokemon cards for several months, actually. I'm still pretty Pokemon ignorant despite that. I'm old, I forget things. No worries, you, you probably didn't even know. Uh, who's that, who's that poke, poke, Pokemon? I don't know what that means. Vikings, they don't know how to return love, yes. Barbarians, that's what they were. Uh, but that's, that's pretty much it. Two thumbs up for Imperial Miners for me, it's a great game. Just not a just not a gateway game in my opinion. Uh, there's just too much going on, too much text, uh, too many uh, moving parts for as simple a game as it is. But I think uh, uh, once somebody is savvy with the game, they'll love it. Um, it's just that I don't think it, it, it's got a learning curve. It's got a pretty steep learning curve. So that's the only real uh, con for the game. Otherwise. Uh, I think it's uh, definitely one you should go check out. And as someone already said, I believe, uh, who, who was that, Karen? Karen said that it was $27.50. Yeah, $27.50 on Amazon. Good night. Amazon's usually expensive. Um, so $27.50, 30 bucks for as much game as this box has in it. Um, I think it's a no-brainer. But you choose, you do you, and you choose how you spend your money, not me. Uh, but I did give you my opinion. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here so I can start cleaning up. Uh, waiting for a live play of this one, Sam. What? I already did a live play of this one, Nuno. That's what I just told Eric. <laughs> um, uh, I've also, I've already done, I've already done a live solo play of this. And we've also done a live multiplayer game of it. I think it was me, JT, and, and Jess. Uh, did a uh, live play of this. Maybe it was just me and Jess, but I think it was three of us. Uh, so uh, just do a search on our channel and that should pull right up. Got to look for that. Please do. I think you'll enjoy the play. Uh, I would imagine that um, you'll be you'll be uh, jonesing to, to go pick up a copy after those plays, if it strikes your fancy. It might not, but it definitely strikes my fancy. It's one of my favorite games. So there you have it. That's been Imperial Miners. I got to get out of here and do some uh, housework. 
and get ready for my chiropractor appointment. Thank you for joining me, though. I certainly appreciate you. Come back tomorrow for a, a solo live play. I don't know what I'm going to play yet, but I'll figure it out, and uh, I'll be ready to go probably around 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. All right. Thank you for joining me. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. See you on the flip side, folks. Take care.